Hey, today I'll be talking about episodes 34 through 39 of Legend of Jun Huan. It's been months since the miscarriage, and Jun Huan tells Mei Zhuang that she's seen the light. Guo Wang helps her catch some butterflies, and she asks for Mei Zhuang's help with her plan to get back into the Emperor's good graces. The family is at yet another banquet, and Mei Zhuang not so subtly suggests everyone go outside and admire the flowers. They happen across Jun Huan, praying in the snow, just like on the night she first met the Emperor. What a coincidence. When the Emperor goes to help her up, butterflies come out of her coat. Cause, you know, she's so pure at heart that even butterflies are attracted to her. Or something. The Emperor is completely charmed and poor Ling Rong realizes her 15 minutes are up. In case it wasn't obvious enough, that was all an act. Based on her behavior, Jun Huan's innocent love for the Emperor has changed, and now she's just focused on keeping him infatuated with her. To that end, over the next few days she refuses to sleep with him, keeping him interested with the classic hot and cold until she finally relents. In addition, she starts encouraging the Emperor to spend more time with Chao Guiren and her daughter, sending a clear message to Chao that she wishes for them to be allies. One day, Jun Huan runs into Chao Guiren and Fu Chao. The last time they met, Fu Chao was encouraging Chi Fei to stomp her out, sure that Jun Huan would never become a favorite again, so she's understandably nervous. Jun Huan tells the story of a consort who offended an empress, so the empress had the consort's hands and legs cut off, gouged out her eyes, cut off her ears, and locked her up in an outhouse. It's a very, very thinly veiled threat, and Chao Guiren takes the hint and starts telling some scary stories she's heard. Fu Chao gets so scared that she passes out, and her servants take her away, leaving Chao Guiren with Jun Huan. With women as intelligent as these two, there's no need to mince words. Jun Huan asks her outright if she intends to stick with the woman that poisoned her baby. Chao Guiren tells Jun Huan the truth about how Chun Changzai drowned. With that, the two solidify their alliance. Chi Fei finds Fu Chao freaking out about Jun Huan getting her revenge. She decides to go and pay Jun Huan a visit, hoping to apologize and smooth things over. Jun Huan turns her away at the door. She doesn't plan on playing nice this time around. Over time, Jun Huan makes herself indispensable to the Emperor and even advises him with government matters. Nian Gong Yao has become a massive pain in the Emperor's side, amassing so many supporters that he has become a serious threat. In order to smooth things over, Jun Huan suggests that he restore Hua Fei's position. Jun Huan has definitely grown and she understands that the only way to win is to play the long game. That night, the Emperor goes to see Hua Fei and tell her that she is forgiven. I can't tell if Hua Fei actually missed him or missed having power, but in any case, she's very happy. The next morning, Hua Fei is back. Ha ha ha, I'm back, bitches! I don't know what I was expecting, but it still cracks me up how shameless she is. After all of that, she's just as bad, worse even. Over the next few days, the Emperor goes to see her often, and it seems that he's completely forgiven her. Since we know he's faking, it's a fascinating look into his brain that this is what he considers seduction. This is what you get when women are forced to pretend to find you attractive your whole life. Though the Emperor visits often, Hua Fei knows him well enough and can tell that something has changed. Even when she receives the news that she will once again be promoted to noble consort, she can't set her fears aside. Since Hua Fei is back, Chao Guiren goes back to her side, but she's a double agent, loyal to Jun Huan. To be clear, not because she likes Jun Huan, but because she can see that Hua Fei's return is only temporary. If only Mei Zhuang could see so clearly. Mei Zhuang has wanted to get revenge on Hua Fei for so long that she can't forgive Jun Huan for bringing her back. She even accuses Jun Huan of siding with Hua Fei and Yang Gong Yao. This scene seems really out of character. They've gone to such lengths to show us how strong their relationship is. Mei Zhuang should know that Jun Huan would never do something like that, let alone with the woman responsible for her miscarriage. It's also strange that Jun Huan doesn't lay out her plan clearly and explain that she intends to bring Hua Fei down for good. A bit of a contrived argument that really just sticks out because the writing is generally so good. Anyway, unable to come to an agreement, they decide not to see each other for a while. With Mei Zhuang and Jun Huan split, Ling Rong tries to weasel her way back into Mei Zhuang's good graces, but Mei Zhuang is sad, not stupid. With that, the trio is completely split. With the weather getting hotter, the Emperor decides on another trip to the Summer Palace. Jun Huan, Hua Fei, Ling Rong, and some of the other concubines are invited. When Jun Huan arrives, she's greeted by Fourth Prince, who's very excited to see her again. He just kind of disappeared after last year's trip, but in any case, Jun Huan still plans to make good on her promise to help him get closer to the Emperor. Rumors start that Nian Gong Yao intends to try and usurp the Emperor, and it's finally time for the plan to kick into action. The Emperor hosts another banquet, and Jun Huan is uncharacteristically rude. She gives Hua Fei's maid a hard time, 
so much so that the emperor gets angry with her. He sends Zhen Huan to one of the nearby islands to reflect on her mistakes. The Empress is suspicious of Zhen Huan's weird behavior, and later tells Ling Rong to volunteer to accompany her since Mei Zhuang didn't make the trip this year. Ling Rong pretends that she simply wants to keep Zhen Huan company, but while she's there, she spies on Zhen Huan and sees that she's still meeting with the Emperor's eunuch. Turns out that the Emperor has decided to make a move and shut down Yang Gong Yao's coup before it can start. If he fails, the Emperor will most likely be killed, so he sent Zhen Huan away to protect her. All of this was just an act. The day of the coup arrives. Since she doesn't know if the people in the messenger boat are friend or foe, Zhen Huan carries a dagger just in case. Luckily, the mission was a success and she doesn't have to kill herself. Ning Gong Yao's major supporters are captured and killed, but he remains alive. Zhen Huan can go back home. That butterfly plan was so silly and yet so in line with the Emperor's character. Remember Ling Rong's super dramatic return? Though really, he would have gone along with anything if it meant things going back to normal. Not that things are back to normal. Seeing Zhen Huan and the Emperor together is so much stranger now. Her every word and move seems to be designed to make the Emperor fall more in love with her. I mean, to be fair, she was never totally free with her words like Chun, for example, but still, there is a clear change in the way she treats him, and the Emperor either hasn't noticed or doesn't care. The point is, his favorite girl is back. I'm glad that Zhen Huan has allied with Chao Guiren. She's not exactly trustworthy, but she's smart. And most importantly, she has a ton of dirt on Hua Fei. In some ways, Ling Rong and Chao Guiren are similar. They can never be the lead characters. They're just used as pawns by other people. Chao Guiren has gone from Hua Fei to Zhen Huan, and Ling Rong is now just a puppet for the Empress. It's a sad way to live. Though, would they really be any happier with the Emperor's attention? Probably not. We've officially reached that critical junction in every harem drama where the main character loses their innocence and is born anew. Jin Wan's new character is cooler, honestly. <laughs> her makeup, her words, everything is sharper and more calculated. Sunli is doing a fantastic job of playing a newly jaded woman coming into her own. And of course, with the fall of Nian Gong Yao, Hua Fei is sure to follow soon. And that I can't wait to see. Till next time, thanks for watching.